Good evening. <clears throat> I'll let you take your Bible and open it up to the book of Jonah. And we will spend our time tonight in the entire book. But I will bounce off of a statement that's made in chapter 3, verse 1 of Jonah. That the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. Actually, I read verses 1 and 2, as you can see. But anyway, the book of Jonah. I guess um, everybody has read it many times. You've studied it many times. You've had many classes on it. Of all the minor prophets... In, to me at least, Jonah is probably the simplest to study. Everybody knows the book from children on up. <clears throat> uh, it'd be interesting to know how many sermons you've heard based on this book over the course of years. I suspect probably many. <laughs> I want us to think tonight from the statement that I just read in verse 1, that the word of the Lord came the second time to Jonah, which means, of course, that it came the first time. And now, a second time. And if it came the first time, which it did in chapter 1, verse 1, why didn't it take the first time? That's the question of the ages right there. So Jonah stands out in history as one of the fortunate ones to whom the Lord appealed a second time. He was patient with Jonah. Not everybody has fared so well in terms of... Uh, Prophets, for example, in 1 Kings chapter 13, there's record of a prophet who didn't get a second chance. Uh, when he disobeyed the word of the Lord, because he was, he was convinced by an older prophet to go contrary to what God had told him, because it sounded good and the older prophet was very convincing, then this younger prophet paid for it with his life because he was attacked by a lion and killed. I remember dealing with that particular text not too long ago from this pulpit. I called it a prophet who lied and a prophet who died. Well, he didn't get a second chance. But Jonah got a second chance. Why the difference? I, I don't know. But it's interesting to me that he did. I want us to delve a little bit tonight into uh, second chances. Not everybody gets a second chance at most things in life. When we think of second chances, sometimes people take the idea of second chances and they project it into areas where we can't go with it. I know that a great many people have the idea that, you know, after we die, the Lord being a loving God, He'll give us a second chance. Well, from what I understand of the Scriptures, in Hebrews 9 and verse 27, it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. I don't see a second chance couched in any of that. But people have their theories and uh, they 
feel comfortable in espousing the idea of a second chance there. That's not where this lesson is going tonight. I'm, I'm not dealing with anything of that nature because we don't know what a day might bring forth. Proverbs 27, verse 1. You don't know if you'll get a, another chance to do something that you've neglected to do or elected not to do for whatever reason. So those things being what they are, second chances sometimes come to us, sometimes they don't. I like to think that we appreciate them when they do, if we get a second chance, if we've messed up somehow, and we get another time or it comes back to us again, and we can make up for it, good. All the better. We learn sometimes by our mistakes and by our shortcomings, and hopefully we improve. Jonah stands out as one who got a second chance. And when the Lord came back to him a second time, the requirements were no different. Nothing changed. It was still his job to go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach. And for whatever reason, Jonah, a prophet, who, which in the book he's not called a prophet, but he is a prophet because the word of the Lord came to him. And that was the test of a prophet, among other tests. But he ignored it the first time. He had his reasons, I'm, I'm sure, and those reasons are basically couched in the book. But he, God's going to give him another chance because God put him through a test of being swallowed by a fish. And that became, well, that was a lesson to him. It was a lesson in life. And he was able to think about some things and he came back and he prayed about some things and prayed while he was in the fish's belly. And then when God was done with him, when the fish was done with him, came to him again. After Jonah had thought some things over, gave him a second chance. Now I'd like for us to think about this a little bit tonight. How did Jonah handle his second chance when the Lord came to him a second time? And what's involved in that? Second chances. What about it? Well, second chances come from one who's qualified to give them. I've received a few in life. You have too. From those who are qualified to give those second chances to you, it may be a spouse, maybe a teacher, maybe an employer superior, in some fashion or another, somebody has given you a second chance and you're grateful for it. The second chance that came to Noah came from one who was qualified to give it. And that's suggested in our text in chapter 3 and verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Just as in chapter 1, verse 1, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. There's the qualification. Because as I've already mentioned to you, in this book he's not called a prophet, although he's included among the minor prophets. And one of the qualifications of a prophet is that he received the word of the Lord. Now, here he receives a second chance, a second opportunity, and he takes advantage of it. Why? What's different now than the first time in chapter 1, verse 1? Well, because the second chance comes from one who's qualified to give it, and the qualification 
Not only is it the word of the Lord, but in chapter 2 and verse 9, after Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, and you read down through 9, 10 verses, in verse 9, But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. So the Lord is qualified to give it. Not only to save Jonah from his disobedience, but to save the people of Nineveh, who's the target of Jonah's preaching at this point. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and Jonah is his instrument in this commission to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. So Jonah, Jonah, after this experience in chapter 2, really comes to the point of, as we sometimes sing, where could I go (laughs) but to the Lord? It comes from one who's qualified to give it. And then this second time or chance comes from a merciful God. Not only is he qualified, number one, but he's merciful, number two. And Jonah learned that lesson. Chapter 4 and verse 2, a lot's happened since the opening of chapter 3. Chapter 4 and verse 2, the chapter opens, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Angry at what? Positive responses to hard preaching. It's hard to imagine a preacher being upset about something like that, and yet he was. So there's something going on in Jonah's mind that doesn't belong there. But in verse 2, he prayed to the Lord. He said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. This is why I ran away in the first place. In chapter 1. Because I knew the kind of God that you are. Now, something's not right about that. There's a prejudice and a bias in the mind of Jonah that doesn't belong there. And only the Lord can straighten him out. But of the things that he confesses here, he confesses his knowledge of God. This is the kind of God you are. And I knew it then and I know it now. You are a gracious God. You are merciful. You're slow to anger. Abounding in steadfast love. Relenting from disaster. In other words, a God who will change his mind when it comes right down to it. When the circumstances are right. So he confesses to having known that. Though intellectually, Jonah knew what God was like, but Jonah wasn't that way. That's his problem. He was not merciful. He was unrelenting. He wasn't full of steadfast love. Jonah wasn't. God was. But Jonah wasn't like that. Jonah was held back by prejudice and ill will against a people that God loved, but Jonah didn't. And for that reason, he refused to preach the word of the Lord to these people. And it took the experience of the vine in chapter 4 to teach Jonah a lesson, to teach him what Sometimes people in a lifetime never learn that God is a God of love and he will deal with the guilty. Even the apostles were slow to realize this. There's, there's something that kind of jumps out 
at us in Luke chapter 9, verses 51 and 52, or 50 through 56, that is, when Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem and stopped off at a Samaritan city. And the people there, knowing that Jesus had set his face to go to Jerusalem, would not accommodate him. The disciples got upset. Two of them did. And asked him, should they call down fire from heaven and blow these people off the map? Jesus said, no. You don't know what you're asking. You don't know what kind of spirit you have. So, that unrelenting spirit, characteristic of Jonah here, he realizes God is a merciful God. And it's a merciful God that gives us another time. A second chance, if you will, to do what's right. The second chances are for those who sin, for sinners, for people who mess up. And Jonah messed up royally. Now, in chapter 3 and verse 4, if you'll note, when Jonah got his head right, and he responded the way he should have the first time. In verse 4, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. All right, you've got forty days. You better get your act together. People heard him. People thought about it. The king of Nineveh heard him. The word reached the king in verse 6 of Nineveh. He got up from his throne. He removed his robe. He covered himself with sackcloth. He sat in ashes. He issued a proclamation. And the proclamation said by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone run from his evil way, from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? And this is the question of the king now. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. Second chances are for sinners. In Noah's preaching, he said, you people have 40 days to get things right. People today are in basically the same situation. But you know what? We don't know. We don't know whether we have 40 days or 40 years or 40 minutes to get things right. We don't know. But we have opportunities day after day. Today is the day of salvation. God gives us a chance every single day, as long as we're breathing, to do what's right. Because second chances are for sinners, for people who mess up. And Jonah messed up. Now, I'd like to include verse 10 here before I leave this thought. When God saw what they did, that is the people of Nineveh, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them and he did not do it. And that's the thing that enraged Jonah. Now we come to this thought. And that is that second chances should put a smile on your face. Should make you glad. In this case, it didn't. Jonah was the exact opposite of what any of us would be when it came to his second chance. Because as I've already noted with you in chapter 4 and verse 1, but... It displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. All right, 
Here's a preacher who's mad. Mad at what? Mad at the success of his preaching. That just doesn't ring right to me. But it fit the bill here because his heart was not right. Now, that's a strange thing. And it's hard for us to figure this out. But Jonah, this whole book, the book of Jonah, teaches us God's attitude toward sinful people. And when we hold back with the gospel because we think that people are too bad, they won't listen, or we have some kind of a barrier that will not allow us to try to get into their lives with God's word. Or if we have a prejudice that serves as that barrier or a preconceived notion or notions or an exclusivism of some kind as Jonah had all of this that kept him away that precipitated his disobedience to the word of the Lord coming the first time. And when he learned a hard lesson, was given a second chance, he took advantage of it, and then got all bent out of shape when things went well for these people. Something's not right about that. So the book of Jonah teaches us God's attitude toward sinners. And that's a hard lesson sometimes for us to learn because my attitude may not be what God's attitude is. It needs to be. Book of Jonah is about second chances and taking advantage of those second chances. Now, there are many times and many ways in which we will never get a second chance. But if we do, or when we do, better think about it. And better yet, to take advantage of it. Now, another thought about this book of Jonah. And this is one that involves one who is greater than Jonah. Is the book of Jonah is somewhat about a resurrection. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, okay, Jonah was swallowed by a whale. And after three days and three nights, he was spit back up on the land. Well, he had some time to think about things. Jonah's back, and now he's got his head screwed on right. But he's still messed up in heart, as we see later on. So there's a resurrection of sorts. Now... Enter Jesus. And in Matthew 12 and verses 39 through 41, when religious leaders clamor for a sign from the Lord, and Jesus says, look, I'm not going to give you any signs except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And the sign of the prophet Jonah is reflective of and identical to the sign of Jesus. Three days, three nights in the heart of the tomb. And he comes back, the resurrected Lord. That's the sign of the prophet Jonah right there. And it's in Christ. So the book of Jonah is a book about a second chance, yes, but a resurrection also because... It's fulfilled in Jesus, you see. And that's where it comes alive for us. To look at Christ. He's back. He's greater than Jonah. The sign has been given. We, his people then saw it. Do we see it? Do we think about it? If God has given you a second chance tonight because you're here to think about things that have been neglected, the word of the Lord has not been acted upon, not been obeyed, it can be. Look at it as a second chance to come back and to do what's right. And a Sunday night opportunity, there's no better time than now to reflect on it and think about it in terms of Jonah 3 and verse 1. A second chance or another chance to respond to Jesus, to obey Him, 
live faithfully for him, one day die, to become a member of the body of Christ right here at Mabelvale, to serve, to live, and to love from this day forward. Now's your chance while we stand and sing to encourage you.